Hello people, and welcome back to part 15 of Novaria, our city skyline snow build. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. And thank you for all the support on Sunday's live stream. I had a really nice time, uh, and a funny time as well, putting together Karina Marina, uh, working with some green cities. Uh, waterfront high-rise vibes came together quite nicely, I think. And then also the introduction of the first fishing assets uh, into Novaria. And the discovery of some wonderful green cities market vibes behind the fish market, which kind of extends it, you know? It's almost like this is where you buy your prawns, your shellfish. And this is where you buy, like, kind of the top tier fish, like cod and swordfish and whatnot. And then you'd get your bottom tier fish from these little market stalls. And then some organic green cities zoning behind this as well, which has come together quite nicely. Uh, and then another little city park in here as well, which works in our transition of height from low density residential here, and even the trees start climbing up into this high rise. So again, if you haven't joined us for our Sunday live streams, uh, every week at 7pm UK, and uh, they're a really nice time, I really appreciate all the support on them, and I'm glad you guys are enjoying the live streams still uh, this far into the channel, so thank you for the support. However, in today's episode of Novaria, I want to start introducing uh, some expanded highway spice into the city. So, I want to work on a four-way interchange here. Okay, so we're going to have one way this way, one way that way, another one coming out here, and then another one coming out here. So we will feed this way uh, through the mountain, generate some nice kind of tunnel mountain vibes, uh, bring the highway out the other side, and then hook it into this interchange over here probably. Uh, we'll rework this to accommodate uh, another highway connection. And then likewise with the other one, uh, we're going to feed it up here, uh, parallel with uh, Canal of Area, I think <laughs> is what we've called it now. Um, and then bring another highway connection uh, directly into the downtown and probably feed it into the downtown's ring road uh, once we come to work on that design in a few episodes' time. So this should be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I am not efficient with highway interchanges, so let's build a four-way, shall we? The first thing I want to have a look at is the terrain, because we're going to be terraforming a fair bit of land uh, to get this interchange to fit in. So how about we pick out a height here, and then try to implement this up against the highway. So I want to have a little check at the height here. So let's grab our highway, and then we'll come on to uh, a single elevation point, and ideally... I like to come up by five or six steps. So if we just come out from here and draw us across, we're still a little bit tight by the looks of it. Yeah, okay, so let's maybe pick out a slightly smaller layer. Let's come maybe for this one instead. And then throw it down to this layer. Again, it's making sure that our heights are sensible. Yeah, so we can come straight across there. There's a slight dip in the bridge, but I don't think I'm going to mind that, right? Okay. I think that'll be fine. So with this in mind, let's uh, now begin to meander this around. So let's come in with our freeform tool. And we'll get this set up for where we want it to flow. So I imagine probably over here. Now we'll probably do a touch more terraforming over this side too. And then we'll align with our road guidelines directly either side. And then just keep everyone... Snap it onto those road guidelines, so we're remaining parallel. All right, and we can now bring it back down onto Earth. This terraform section, and that'll give us our first little bankings here. Okay, not bad. We'll now continue to run our larger highway pieces. Of course, we'll worry about lane direction. I want everything set up, but we'll just start to eye up a nice run through the forest here now. Again, we are going to be heading uphill, but I don't think that's the worst thing in the world, right? I want to make sure that we're maintaining these same distances all the way around. Okay. Plenty of decoration opportunities here as well. We can, of course, maybe squeeze in some zoo fence in between if we've left ourselves enough room. Yeah, there's a, just the smallest little sweet spot where we can maybe squeeze in some crash barrier vibes. We may also use uh, the highway with sound barriers at some point today as well. We'll worry about that from a detailing perspective come the end, of course, during our detailing time lapse. Okay, so I guess now it's just a straight run up towards the mountain. So we want to make sure we snap into our angle. Okay, and then rear guideline too. We 
I'll bring this up. Of course, there's plenty of opportunities to bring uh, separate interchanges off of this road now as well. Um, and introduce some smaller rural towns off the back of this highway. And I think right here is going to be a sensible place. So let's come on to road length as well. And then we'll come out by 10 and then we'll sink. And then likewise here again as well. And we're going to get a really nice kind of straight run highway through the conifer forest here as well, which will be nice. Fantastic. It's going well so far. <laughs> For those that don't know, I am not confident with interchanges, but we'll see what we can do today, right? So I think what we're going to do here is temporarily remove this train line, just so we've got a little bit of extra breathing room, and then we'll factor that back in. Once the rest of our interchange is kind of uh, accommodated for here. Okay, so I think we'll we'll grab this layer again. And then we'll bring it up here, alright? So that's going to be the same height over this side. So we'll terraform out more land than we need, of course, and then once everything's in, we can adjust it as to what we need. So let's set our slope to... Get a nice gradual slope up here. So we're starting to develop some little land barriers around the edge of the main highway now, which will be nice. Okay, let's bring that up there. I think we can hide the danger of the drop here with some fencing, of course. Maybe even actually knock this back another further road guideline, just so we have that extra breathing room. And then we'll bring this down with our slope tool. Well, with our freeform tool down the curve. Change our directions here too. Alright. And then we'll come on to row length and angle. And we'll begin to approach the main bridge here. And now let's come up by. So we can clear the bridge there and maybe bring this down on a slightly more even slope. There we go. Okay. And then we'll come on to our freeform tool. And then we'll begin to cross over the highway this side. So I think this will look fairly ugly before it starts to look good, so just bear with me. And then we'll bring this down onto the same road guideline, maybe on a slightly shallower slope than that. Okay. And then bring it back down to earth like so. And then we'll hook into the highway this side. And then we can also bring in slope that comes out from here as well. Let's uh, line onto our road guideline with the highway first of all. We'll go for that right there. And let's bring this in. We'll of course factor in lane mathematics today as well. So we'll bring in a nice slope like this and then we'll pop into a two lane. Okay, so that'll give our connections uh, into this highway here. Which I don't think is too bad looking. I think once we terraform more around it and include some more rocks, it'll look a little more natural, but for right now, I think it'll do a job, right? I think it will. Let's hope so anyway. <laughs> we'll try. So I hope now we've left enough room To come over here. There's uh, just about enough room there, right? And look at my fall of our snapping. I want to get this as close to the pillar as we can. There we go. And then we'll line up our approach roads here as well. So what's the distance here? About 120 out. We get a nice smooth curve there. So we're developing that layer of transport height now. I don't think that's too bad. This slope's a little gnarly, but I don't think it's totally unrealistic, right? I think we can get away with that. Okay. Let's grab our terraforming tool again as well, and we'll prepare some more land. This side of the highway, so we can slope down. And connect in an exit ramp for this side. So again, we'll come into our road guideline and first of all, line everyone up. Right. 
and then let's grab our straight tool. I think we can get away with that though, can't we? So I think that would be okay for what we wanted to serve, right? So people who could travel in this direction can now get on this way as well. We'll also want to give them a connection into this side too, which will be uh, easily done from this point. So we'll factor that in as well. Uh, let's worry about getting this side hooked in first of all. So again, let's just kind of rejig our angles here and make sure we're somewhat parallel. So we'll come in like that. I find that coming with the freeform tool makes these things a little easier. Is that a touch janky there? I'm not quite happy with this node. Let's see if we can rework this slightly. Let's maybe come in from this side instead. I think that's a little easier, isn't it? Okay. Not too bad. Of course, I want to keep checking it from all angles to make sure that we're somewhat sensible. And then again, uh, this one's a, a really easy connection. We want to make sure we're maintaining some kind of symmetry here. So let's align our road guideline snaps first of all. And then this should allow us to come down onto that road guideline here. Okay. Today is going to be quite a slow episode, I imagine. <laughs> so apologies if it's not for everyone, but... I feel after Brenwood, Begusia and Palavin, I'm a little more confident with interchanges these days, so I thought it'd be fun to do this on camera. Uh, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, I don't think, is it? <laughs> but we'll, we'll see what we can do together, shall we? This slope's not too bad either, I don't think. I think once it's decorated, it'll come into its own a little bit. So I think what I want to do to connect this side into this side is actually do a little bit of terraforming here. So I'm going to take away this connection very briefly. And then we're going to grab our level terrain tool. And hopefully bring through something here to float under these bridges. So this might take a little bit of rejigging, but we'll see what we can do to get this to fit. Okay, so we'll just keep it going like so. And then again, we'll align with our road guideline. First of all, make sure that we'll snap into those two. That's going to be okay, isn't it? Should be. Now it does connect back in like that way. That'll be fine. Of course, let's not forget our main highways as well. Let's come on to road length two. And we can cross over in that manner. That should be okay, I think. Let's hope so anyway. connect those in. Alright, don't think that's too bad, is it? I think it's alright. It's tolerable anyway. <laughs> we will see. We'll see. So we'll of course need to just temporarily remove this one. Now I would like to come out through another little elevation snap here. So let's see if we can do that. Let's grab this elevation height. And then we'll create a little, little gully here. Okay. And then maybe bring it alongside this. So we'll start to take a little bit of the bulk out of this initial terraform landmass now. Okay, so we can cross over at that height. That's going to be tremendously helpful. And then we want to touch back down into the earth as we come around these corners and then I'm hoping that we can just simply draw a bridge over this one here which it looks like we can which is great let's draw that in and then bring this one back over so I don't think that's too bad is it I think we can get away with that I think the thing I hate about it at the minute is this bend here maybe we'll try and make it a little more curvier to come over this side but we'll We'll see how that comes across, but for right now that's going to give these folks a connection into this side. Okay. So we of course don't want to forget about this connection here. Let's bring this back out uh, with no, no angle. Let's actually terraform first of all, Let's see what we're doing here. So let's 
Let me pick out a slightly smaller height to come onto this one. And then we can bring this one over now. I want to snap to our angle here. And we'll come on as close as we can. And hopefully this should be a simple freeform connection. Yes, it is. Okay. So I don't mind that, I don't think. And that's going to be okay. Right, I'm going to try smoothing this curve out, I think. So I think I'm slightly happier with that angle. Just kind of brought the curve over this side a little bit rather than having it at such a, what was almost a 90 degree angle. So I think I'm happy with it. <laughs> Again, it's maybe a touch too steep. But we can always refine during our D10 time lapse, right? I think we can. Uh, okay, so now let's focus on getting uh, this side hooked in here. So we'll terraform out the landmass a little more. And it's hopefully just a case of bringing in a nice little connection like that. Okay, I don't think the slopes are too severe there, are they? I think we're okay with those. So now I think the only connection that we're missing is for people to travel from this direction. They can't get onto this right-hand lane here if they wanted to. So we'll, we'll see what we can do to factor that in. But I think I'm relatively happy with this for right now. Uh, we do, of course, want to reinstate the train line. So let's have a little look at how we can do this. So there's possibilities to bring it under this way. If we were to terraform this, because this is a bridge, we can bring it underneath. And then likewise with this one as well. So if we just break this connection for the time being, let's make sure we're clearing enough room to come through here. And then we'll grab this connection again. And we want to come off road length and angle here. Okay, let's break this one too, and then we'll let's make sure we come back down to earth, and then put that in. That's going to be okay. And then we'll grab that train line, and we'll, we'll freehand this with the freeform tool. We just want to meander around these curves if possible. Very nice. Come back onto our road guideline. Get a nice connection in there. And then we'll snap to our angle as well. And then we'll just get some nice sweeping curves with our train line. Uh, we'll also want to power our tall boots. So let's bring out a nice highway side power line to run. The nice long stretches along the side. That'll give it some temporary power. I think, you know, it's, there is an appropriate use for power lines, and I think alongside larger interchanges like this is where they, they work nicely. So we can have that in. Okay. So, um, I don't, I don't think this is too bad. <laughs> I think there's definitely room for improvement. I think some of the angles are a little nasty, but um, I'll refine this off camera if possible. I think it'll look a little easier on the eye once it's detailed as well. And of course, once it's got some traffic flowing through it. Uh, so let's now factor in uh, the opposite ends of this highway. So we'll work on this one first of all. So as we're crossing over the water here, I don't want the suspension cables to appear. So we will move gradually in increments of 10. Okay. So if you move in 20, you get the uh, suspension cables. I don't want that for this area. So we'll just stick to those very, very small increments. Okay, we do have some underwater power stuff here that X is placed in with the map, but we'll uh, relocate those. We'll find another way to sink power through anyway. And then we'll cross back over onto the other banking. And this should give us a nice sensible approach. Looks like the elevation steps a little, a 
not too tall, therefore I want it. That'll be fine. Okay, and now we're back on even ground. It's a case of just running these parallel. So I do want these to run parallel alongside Canal of Area. So let's factor in a little bit of a landmass here. Let's give ourselves again more room than we need. And then we're going to want to bring these all the way over. So yeah, this is going to be the parallel line now. So I get these hooked in and uh, straightened out a little bit. And then we can uh, just provide a temporary connection here into this arterial and see if anyone actually picks up the new interchange. So I've just provided a little temporary connection uh, over at the side of uh, Canal of Area using a roundabout. I'm thinking what we'll do with this end of the highway, I was going to feed it into the Dogbone interchange over there, but I think we'll feed it straight into the downtown's ring road uh, once we come to build that. So she's going to leave the city, uh, Kathleen. Let's see where she's going to go. So, so there's a little bit of a bump junk there, isn't there? We'll see if we can fix that. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> that's not what we want to happen. Yes, that's not. Okay, that's a flaw in the interchange. <laughs> that is a flaw. Yes, we will have to separate this out into two one-way um, toll booths. A traffic manager, of course, would fix that. Just say no right turn, but... Uh, yeah, we'll have to use two toll booths here. That's fine. Success. So we're getting Tony Blake here. He's a tourist driving out of the city. So as I thought, the game will just feed people out of this interchange to leave. Let's see where other people are going. Okay, so he's driving to work at the oil industry, and they work at the Woodland Residence over here, which is quite the detour. <laughs> but okay, if she wants to take the highway, that's fine. So it'll start to get some use now, I think, too. Uh, we also don't want to forget uh, to actually hook this in here. Uh, this is a connection that I haven't provided. And so I want to make sure that we factor this in. Let's do some terraform work first of all. Again, apologies for those that are fully versed in building highway interchanges. It is very much my weak point within the game. Uh, but the only the only way to get better is to practice, right? So we'll try and do it together here. Then we'll go that into two way or two lane rather. And that'll give a connection for these folks to get into the uh, into the eventual downtown, of course. But otherwise, I think I'm fairly happy with this to be left as it is, and then we'll detail it up towards the end of the episode. Not bad, we'll hopefully start seeing some more people uh, pick up this highway interchange. Now, it'll be very interesting to see how many people choose to come down this way, uh, which is what we're going to work on now. Uh, we so I think what we'll do for our final interchange today is uh, develop a little trumpet number. I was thinking of maybe doing a Y, but we did a few Ys in Palavan, so I don't think we had any trumpets in that city. So let's uh, do something a little different over this side instead. So we'll stick to increments of 10 as we curve up. This is a fairly oversized trumpet, but um, we're out in the country here, so we've got plenty of room. And it'll have some nice uh, rock detailing within the middle of it as well. Okay, so let's bring this down now. That run down there for the duration and we can snap into our road guideline here now we have them aligned bring it over very nice and then again we just keep snapping to our road guidelines everyone's going to stay nice and uh, evenly apart which is always nice isn't it and we can bring them down and then we can separate them there and get everyone hooked in and then just come back through and change our directions. There we go. And then likewise with this one as well. We want people to float the opposite way. And then we'll start coming down towards the river here. So we'll come down in a nice smooth increment of 11. 
Yeah, so I think we'll feed this highway straight across the river here, and then follow the meander and bend of the river through the valley. Then we'll come onto our road guide down here and prepare our final slip routes. Bring this down here, and then prepare our connection. And then again, we've got the space to run through here. Then we'll do the same on this side, so we're coming out by uh, seven curves, that'll be five, six, and then seven. Then there's five, six, and seven this side. Then we can prepare to hook in that side. Wonderful. And then we'll align with this bottom one. And then get our connection this side as well. Very nice. These ones are easy to build. <laughs> um, any, anything three-way is right up my street. Kind of wind changes, like oversized trumpets like this. They're just easy. <laughs> it's when you're adding kind of four and five directions, my brain's just like, what? <laughs> How does this work? But I think practice makes perfect, right? And then I think definitely playing with mods like Move It and uh, the Node Controller certainly makes these larger intersections uh, a lot more tolerable, at least in my experience anyway. So I think as I have not saved enough room on my trumpet in order to upgrade into three lanes here, we're just going to elongate the slip roads. It's a flow with the river, which I think from the bird's eye view gives us uh, some chunky highway spice, so... That's my justification behind it. I think I can live with it. So perhaps a little more over the top than needed for this one, but um, I think I like the idea of the extended uh, rundowns for the, the trumpet interchange. Uh, definitely because I didn't save enough room here <laughs> for the three lanes to come in to get the lane mathematics in, but uh, we can do that over here now uh, as we come in. Uh, to carry on meandering this uh, highway, around the edge of the river so of course we'll just keep it running with our road guidelines on all right and then now do we want to follow the river bank i wonder because i imagine we'll probably have some smaller towns out here along where the the rail line comes to an end so i think we will we'll keep it following the river at least for a little bit of time, okay? Until we get a nice straight run down. Looks like here would be a good spot. And then if we come on with our terrain tool, we can see where we start to bank up. So it'll be okay, and then we'll come out by 10. And then we'll sink by 10. Alright. And again, there's plenty more free highway here to develop more interchanges uh, for smaller, more rural builds. Uh, ways down the line. Again, just using our freeform tool, mimicking those road guidelines that we drew in for the first section. So we're going to come onto our straight section here. So it does. That's a line on this side instead. Up to here, and then sit down by ten again. And then we'll have our little highway tunnels uh, sink into the mountainside here as well. So uh, let's get them hooked up on the other side. And then we'll see how many people begin to flow. Okay guys, so everyone is hooked in. My word, that was pain. <laughs> I am, uh... Apologies if this is not an enjoyable traditional overcharged egg episode to watch. Um, highway interchanges are certainly my weak point within City Skylines. However, I think if we compare this to Fremwood's interchanges, there's definitely improvement, right? I think we're getting there. Slowly but surely. <laughs> um, I've also added in a little tunnel um, off of this one here um, to appear out this side, uh, which does give access from people travelling this direction to get this direction now. Uh, and there are a couple of folks uh, picking it up. I've seen some people come down here. Um, but for the meantime, the interchanges are actually fairly quiet, of course, because there's not that much out here. Um, there's nothing over here yet. And, of course, when this eventually uh, hooks directly into the downtown ring road, uh, this will become significantly busier. And we will also delete this as well. This is definitely not final, uh, this roundabout over here. Um, yeah, we'll obviously have a ring road that surrounds our downtown as the city burns in the background. Uh, and this will be a direct highway connection uh, into that. Uh, so that should be a fun little project. 
uh, when we do come to work on the downtown road layout episode. Um, but yeah, otherwise, relatively happy, and this does feel like a good place for a detailing time lapse. Um, lots of fence detailing, tons of rocks, lots of trees to bring in around these things. Uh, to make it fit into the natural landscape uh, a little bit better. Uh, and for both of them, we'll do the trumpet over here as well. Uh, we'll do this one, and then we'll come back on this one too. And I'll also bring in a little bit of uh, mountainside detailing uh, alongside here as well to help our highway uh, stand out uh, a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, let's detail it up and see what we look like on the end, shall we? Okay hey guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, a like below and comments are always appreciated. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Apologies again for my total incompetence with interchanges. Uh, by far my biggest weak point within the game. But practice makes perfect, right? We can only keep building them and hopefully keep getting better at the same time. Uh, the interchanges at the minute are fairly quiet, purely because of the infrastructure on either end of them is fairly non-existent. So once the downtown uh, is built, we will probably see these interchanges become significantly busier as people move back and to using the high speed options. But otherwise, I'm fairly happy with it. I do hang around for the rest of the outdoor targe. You guys wouldn't have seen all the D's hearing across the three ends of the highway. So let me know what you think of it below. But otherwise, I will shut up and I will leave it there. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.
Zombie Monkey asks, can we look forward to an overly modded Ferro City coming soon? Um, I don't know if it'll be called Ferro shit, it probably will be named after another Mass Effect planet as Palavan and Neveria have been. Yes, after Neveria we will be doing a modded city. I'm thinking of taking heavy inspiration from the American Southwest, cities like Albuquerque and New Mexico. That won't be until Neveria finishes. Um, I ran two cities simultaneously towards the end of Palavan. Didn't really enjoy having two cities on the go at once, so we will definitely finish Neveria totally and completely before the modded desert city starts. Well, thank you again to all the patrons. You guys are a real secret blend of 11 herbs and spices. It really do make a difference to my life, and if you would like to get involved with supporting the channel, there are various ways of doing so down below. Well, thank you again, and I'll speak to you all soon.